I feel like I'm at an outdoor news conference with all these microphones in front of me. I should have said at the beginning, the one other rule about outdoor church is when a loud noise goes by, we stop, and when the loud noise is gone, we start up again. It's been a day of motorcycles and buses so far, and I'm sure that's going to continue. In any event, it is good to be outside, and it is good to do things differently once in a while, if only because it shakes me up and reminds me of all the things that I normally take for granted when we do it inside. A member of the Flower Guild came to me this week and said, well, do we want flowers? And I assumed that she meant for outside, because, you know, we have church outside, we have flowers outside. She meant for inside, of course, but my reaction to having them out here is, well, why would we need them? It gilds the lily, and all of nature is here around us. We're at the end of the growing season. Nature can feel the end of summer coming, and growing is completely out of control everywhere. We have this complete abundance of everything God has given us all the better to be out in it and to appreciate it in as close to its natural state as we can. And also a good time, I think, to hear a little more about God's abundance and God's economy as we begin to move into the fall season and toward our preparations for annual giving and for stewardship for 2025. And so I want to say a few things today as just putting some principles out there about God's economy and happily, the lessons today are helpful for that purpose. And then I hope that Father Clay and I will be able to develop these ideas a, a little more in subsequent Sundays, but at least to lay the groundwork today and get people thinking in these terms. So you may have been listening to the podcast I've been doing about Revelation the last few days. I mentioned in the first one, I think, that the word economy comes from the Greek word that, that is a combination that means managing the house or house management. It's worth it since we are the household of God and we must manage this household God has given us to think about what our management principles are. And I have three of them that I want to offer to you today that I think give us a new understanding of perhaps what it is that we mean when we say that we give to the church and that the church gives to the world and that God gives to every one of us. So the first one that I want to lay before you is the simple concept of abundance. The idea that somehow we have been given absolutely everything we could possibly need, and indeed more than we could ever need, and sadly, more than we could ever figure out how to use. This is not a concept that we normally have an easy time with. I think uh, back to elementary school when I was taught that you know, if you have three apples and you give one away, how many do you have left? You have two left. You have less. Giving away something makes you less in some way. You have less than you started with. And you should worry because maybe you, now you don't have enough. That is not the way God works. Have you ever thought about that? How would it be possible that the glory and majesty of God would be reduced by anything that God gave to anyone? Or that somehow there could ever be scarcity, that if, if God gave a blessing to one person, there wouldn't be enough left over for someone else. It's beyond our comp com comprehension, I know, but somehow in the economy of God, giving never leads to depletion. There is never any less, no matter how much God gives us. And somehow there is never any less than enough, no matter how much we give to the world, to the kingdom of God, to the work of God in the world, whether we individually or we collectively. There's a, a hint about this in the gospel story this morning. It's been interpreted in many different ways, and it's plainly a pretty sharp exchange between Jesus and this woman. What I think she's getting at, and what Jesus rewards her for recognizing, is that the, the, the glory and the grace and the generosity of God are so big they could never be contained in just one place or to just one group of people. They have to go everywhere to everyone. And we in our giving, we in our, our spending, we in our planning, our imagining, our dreaming what we could be doing here likewise must not be limited. Can you imagine reimagining the world in such a way that no matter what you did, God would still give you enough? No matter how much you gave, God would still ensure that you had more than you could possibly use. That is the promise of the economy of God, that abundance will know no limitation. 
It can know no limitation. And in our thinking, that has somehow to re-educate us away from a mentality of scarcity. The second important point is that somehow this giving is continual and that it's for a purpose that doesn't end just with us. Here again, I go back to elementary school. I recall learning about all of the Native American cultures, and it really stuck with me when I was in fourth or fifth grade. I don't know why. But one in particular that I noticed that, that comes down to me right to this day is in the northwest of the United States, uh, in Washington and Oregon, where those groups uh, practice what was called potlatch. Huge parties where the host held the party simply to give stuff away. And the more stuff the host gave away, the more honor that person had. But he or she wasn't giving that stuff away in order that other people could take it and keep it. It was so they could turn around and do the same thing. Giving was for the purpose of increasing giving. I read a whole bunch of books about this this summer. You don't want to know what my summer beach reading was like. I won't make you go through all the details I did, but there's something in this. It's a really deep idea that somehow undercuts the whole idea that what I have is only for my own good, only for my own use. If I have been given everything by God and everything is God's to give me, then surely I have to revalue how I use it, and how I even imagine it, whether it's mine or if I'm holding it somehow in trust. Someone said that to me this morning after 8 o'clock, that in fact, this place, St. Thomas's, we hold this in trust. The comment was made with respect to the diocese and the bigger church, but it's true for the community as well. Think about how many community groups, how many community people come through St. Thomas's daily, weekly, annually. We have something important here. We're sitting in something that we hold in trust for the community. This is a, a major green piece of Newark that would not be here if we did not do it and did not maintain it. That's my first trash truck of the day. I can check that off now. <laughs> even more than that, an even deeper thing that comes out of the letter of James is the idea that by giving, we, we enable others to be givers also. The more we give, the more others are raised to the level of a giver. And if you're connecting the dots quickly enough, if everything is coming from God, we are somehow raised toward God in the process of that giving. Everyone is brought a little bit closer to the majesty and the presence of God by that ability to share. Share is probably a better word in this context than give. Although even that still implies it's mine, but I'll let you use it temporarily. God never says that to us, does God? It's all God's, and yet somehow it's all put in to our hands. Then the third principle is that somehow all of this generosity, all of this overflowing graciousness is a way of overcoming obstacles and boundaries. You and I have been brought up to imagine that our worth is determined by how much stuff we have. Every time I open up my Bank of America app on my phone, it tells me what my net worth is. Now, that's already a joke because Bank of America doesn't know that I have money other places. But it's not even true then because my net worth has, no, has really very little connection to how much money I have in the bank. If I think of my worth in those terms, by what I have to, to spend, by how much I have, what I can trade for other people's admiration, ultimately I'll fail because I'll run out of money, I'll run out of time, I'll run out of energy, I'll run out of creativity, I'll run out of everything. It's only once I recognize that the currency of heaven, the currency of my own life must be the grace of God that I discover that my net worth is truly limitless. Our net worth is truly limitless. Once we realize that, how could we possibly not respond gratefully? How could we possibly not do everything we can to build the kingdom, the perfection in this world that God imagines? We see this in every one of the lessons this morning. It's, it's there in the form of, of restoration, healing, 
casting out of demons, the restoration of nature, water in the desert. These images that talk to us about how it is that God overcomes what appears to be our limitations and calls us to do the same if only we will recognize that we have already been made capable of doing that. So those are my three points for the day. We'll hear more, but just sort of to sum all this up a little bit, I think we truly must see that the bounty, the, the, the enormous generosity that God has already poured out upon us can only lead us to respond with gratitude. That somehow gratitude is a better understanding of what we are doing when we act for the church's good, for the good of the world, even than generosity. Because generosity makes it sound like it was up to us in the first place. Surely we must see that, that no matter how much we give, God will backfill. The more we give, the more we receive. Someone this week was talking about how if your fist is closed so tightly, holding on to what you have, it's not open enough so that anything else can be put into it. That's Father Clay's line. I've now stole it from his next sermon. There it is, dear friends. Our hands must be open. Our hearts must be open. God has given us everything that we could need. We have only to see that in managing God's household, new and different principles are needed. Amen.